Time for a viewer's comments video. I'm in the discussion portion of the TMP channel page. The date is 31 May 2014. I'm in a really public place where I can get Wi-Fi. On the laptop, which is at 40% battery power, by the way, I can't sort chronologically on the iPad these comments. I haven't figured out how to do it yet, so I have to use a regular laptop. Here we go. I want to start off with the Prepper Nana. It's a cool name. I wonder if she's like a prepping grandma. Nana the Prepper, <laughs> probably. She writes, hi Nutton, I ordered our first items from Honeyville and the can is dented. Do you know if they would replace it or something? Thanks for the help. Uh, knowing Honeyville, they would replace it. You could tell them it's uh, damaged in shipping. I'm not positive. If the seal was not compromised on the can or cans, I wouldn't even waste my time. It'll be fine. But if you think that it has some air purged in it, yeah, they'd probably hook you up. Beaver2010 writes, hey Nutton, I was wondering if you would be willing to look into the Streamlight Stinger series. I'm a mechanic in southern Idaho. A lot of my guys brought this, bought the Stinger HL. He goes on, says at 180 bucks uh, off of a tool truck. I'm not sure if it is high value light as some might think. I would love your knowledge on such a great company's product. Thanks for all you do. Uh, I, ha I don't really have that plan, the Stinger. Uh, I did actually use that as a walk around light in the Air Force, so I'm very familiar with it. I just haven't broke out a review. Uh, maybe, but it's unlikely. Uh, I have some other flashlights I'd prefer to review that I prefer more. They're more size efficient, and if that thing's 180 bucks, they're more cost efficient. So, and I, you know, there's a lot of online resources for uh, flashlights. And incidentally, if you've watched my latest ones, I do it a lot differently. I'm talking flashlight reviews than I used to. It's very much more to the point. It's a lot less technical because I got to. I got the message from my viewers, they don't really need that technical stuff. They basically want my opinion on the product. Then I'll give them a rundown on features. You know, if we can wrap it up in 15 minutes, awesome. That's what you're going to see with flashlight reviews. They might run 20 depending on how much philosophy is rolled into it. Uh, I have no doubt it's good light though. I've used it, but you've got 4.7s, you've got Phoenix, you've got Next Torch, oh freak, Olight, it goes on and on. It's, the list is endless. Bill Nanya says, hey, I know you can't possibly review every request item asked of you, but wanted to ask if you'd consider reviewing the HHA Optimizer Horizon Scope Mount. Uh, no, not gonna do that, sorry. Let's, uh, I just can't. I don't have the, the bandwidth in my schedule to do it. David Jamison says, just so you know, not fancy, I've followed your videos for a while and just wanted to take time to thank you for your videos. They are most helpful the way you say your opinions and the facts. I love it. Great thumbs up to you, dude. All right, that's David Jamison. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That keeps me trucking. Settle Now says, any chance of a review of the Beretta 130 Tactical Shotgun? Settle Now, have you bought it yet? I bet you have. It's funny. Guys want me to review the stuff they have, so it's, I don't know, vindication in TNP. Uh, I don't know anything about the Beretta 130. I shouldn't say I don't know anything about it. I have held it and check it out. If I'm thinking of the right gun, I may not be. Uh, Berettas are excellent though. They're really good. I, I don't have one on the list. I've got some other shotguns that are coming up in rotation though. I gotta get to those first. Night Sky Guy says, glad to hear Last Suspect is healing. Looks like a lot of metal in that x-ray. Yeah, it was. He got jacked up pretty hard. It was a serious trauma is what his orthopedic surgeon said. Uh, he was not able to get cast yet. He's actually still uh, kind of wrapped because uh, the laceration on his shin all the way to the bone and the flesh hasn't healed enough where they can hard cast yet. Well, I, try, I will try to give you an update direct from him within the next week or so. I'll try. Glowworm Actual writes, hey nothing fancy, where's your Kershaw Blur video? I have searched your channel in the general YouTube search bar and I cannot seem to find it. You are very alert, Glowworm. Glowworm Actual, that's hilarious. Uh, I actually nuked that thing. I got rid of it uh, that the Kershaw Blur actually has locking problems. It wasn't my blurs that were doing it, but it was other ones, and I had several viewers tell me about it, and I'm not going to promote that knife anymore. And Kershaw, from what I understand, refuses to acknowledge the problem. They always blame the user, and I've seen that attitude from Kershaw on several things, and I don't like it. So I'm not going to put money in their pocket when they have that type of attitude. It pisses me off. You want honesty? And these videos are all about honesty. That's honesty. No. Uh, the knife itself, if it's in, and what I'm talking about is you can actually whack the back of the blade and the Kershaw blur will unlock. I never saw that in my video, or in my use. 
uh, of the blur, but I, I sh had some other guys that I ran to personally show me and then other viewers contact me and I, res I respect their opinion. So I listened to them. So no, that's, you're not even going to see an update on that. So they're nuked. Kevin Duvall, Keith Duvall says, I've watched your project for several years off and on as I have opinions of my own. And that's what he says. My opinion may differ every now and then. That's normal. However, you are an expert in your field and skill set. Out of the many channels on YouTube, I keep finding myself coming back to TMP. You just make down-to-earth sense. Very knowledgeable information. You walk the walk. I just want to say thank you for the many upon many hours you put into TMP. That is a quality comment. I appreciate that, Keith. Thank you very much. Um, and it's normal. I mean, I'll do a review and I'll come out with maybe a strong opinion on that. But that's what makes the channel so real, so interesting. And so trustworthy is you know I'm not in the pocket of anybody not the manufacturers I don't give a flying crap what the manufacturers think uh, sometimes I put money in their pocket from my reviews sometimes I take money out from their pockets for my reviews and I'll kill the sales on an item I serve my subscribers end of story super track says nothing fancy have you re reviewed or tested any thermal scopes uh, no I haven't um, I actually had some NV stuff planned. I have there's some uh, surplus NV that was available at one time. I was going to come out with, with a review. I actually showed it in uh, what what was it? It was like winter, one of my winter campouts. I showed it, and I didn't see a lot of response from the viewers, so I really put it on the back burner. <coughs> They're expensive too, and they require a lot of battery power. And in WRL, you're not going to have any battery power to run either night vision or thermal. You will for a little while, but unless you have electricity to recharge. I don't know, it's kind of a, a fantasy kind of to me. And uh, a rule of law, you have a support system. I think thermal scopes, NV, make perfect sense. Eric Asher writes, when are we going to see a review of the SIG P320? Uh, fair question. And you pretty much saw it with the SIG P250. Because that's basically the same gun with a different trigger. So I'll, I'll tell you right now, I love the SIG P, uh, P320. Uh, I have held it. I checked it out. One of the viewers, a TMP -er I ran into, showed it to me. Uh, he's going to loan it to me for an updated review, and it'll be a really quick video because, again, it's the P P250 with a different trigger in my way of thinking. Uh, it's excellent, though. It's another GTW pistol. I have no doubts. Legion02 writes, I'm still hoping for an MMP table MMP10 tabletop review. Are you now? Okay. Noted. Thank you. Jebby88 says, just watched a Blade HQ video with the GSO-5. Great knife, by the way. 5.1, actually. Didn't recognize you without the beard. Bring back the beard, dude. Uh-huh. Kind of disappointing you in this video as well. Uh, I usually run the beard just because I hate shaving. So whenever I can get away without shaving, you'll see me rocking a beard. It's not to be cool or anything. It's just me not wanting to spend time shaving. Joel Wasson says, I'm sure you've been asked about now, but... If not, then how about you do a review on the Remington 783? Something about the rifle that sparks an interest in me is the Magnum contour barrel, even with a non-Magnum chambered variants. I believe that it could be a good quality. It could be a good quality for budget target shooters. All right, maybe. Uh, I've been disappointed on the views for my latest bolt action vids. Uh, not great. So when I see that, I'm 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 kind of demotivated to. Uh, and I'm talking bolt action rifles here. Um, you know, to, to put it on the front burner, you know, I've, this stuff I've addressed in previous stuff, I won't go over it. Nicholas Cleghorn says, Hey, I just watched your video on have fun, but don't destroy yourself. And I was wondering if you had any advice for me. I just recently lost my job and I'm looking now. When I get one, it will most likely be for 10 bucks an hour or less. That's just what we have around here. I live in a little town in Oklahoma and I play my Xbox 360 about 95% of the time. And you're vid really hit home. I need to know a way I can go out having venture as you would say around here for little or no money. I also recently lost my license and my truck blew its clutch so I have very little transportation. I just need to be more active and live in the real world. I mainly live in the fallout New, uh, New Vegas world. Laugh out loud. I need a chance. I was wondering if you had any advice. Wow, that's a great comment. Uh, Nicholas, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I do have some advice for you. You do need to get, to get in the in the real world and you need to face your realities that you have right now. And I think 
video games or movies or internet, something that takes you out of uh, the real life is enjoyable at times. But it can be more than that, as I talked about in that video, and it can be a form of escapism where you're not really facing your realities, your problems that you have. The problem you have right now is you don't have a job, and you know that. Uh, you need to face that reality and take care of it. And I understand that maybe the jobs around there are 10 bucks an hour, but go ahead and take those jobs for $10 an hour and then work hard at it, make a good reputation for yourself at those jobs, build a resume, and then start looking for a better job. If it needs a skill set, like if you want to be a professional welder or something, then find out if there's low, low interest loans in your area, get a loan, go to school, get that skill set, and qualify yourself for higher pay. So like I've said in other videos, just because you're awesome, and I'm not talking to you, but generally somebody who thinks you're awesome, you're not necessarily worth that much money. You're only worth a lot of money to the marketplace if you deliver value to the marketplace. And I'm using the example as a welder. If you're a welder, then you have a skill set that is in demand. People need their mufflers welded, they need furniture, steel furniture welded, gates, it's marketable. So find out what you would like to do, find a skill set and do it. I'm not saying that video games are bad, but when they become an addiction and you're saying you're spending 95% of your time, then they're an addiction. You're escaping from your reality and you need to deal with it. You need to get money coming in and you need to also balance that work. So I'm gonna say you go out, you get that job, you're working your butt off for $10 an hour initially or whatever it is, you're qualifying yourself for a better job. Then you need life balance and that's what that video, Don't Destroy Yourself, is all about. Life balance would be, now you can go and sit in front of the video game if that's what you choose to do and spend an hour, two hours playing it but then go back to real life and now you have life balance. A lot of people, a lot of young people this in this day and age don't have that. They stay in a virtual, virtual reality, I can't speak, virtual reality and they're not part of life. So I would like something better for you. Adventures that don't cost lots, lots of money are everywhere. You can throw on a day pack you bought at freaking Walmart, throw in a water, water bottle and go out hiking. Every state I've ever lived in has adventures waiting. They're just there. You can go to, I remember when I lived in Alabama as a kid, one of the best adventures I ever had is I bought a, a cheapo fiberglass uh, casting rod and a Zebco reel and I took my little brother out at the time and we fished in Chocolaca, by Chocolaca Creek, Alabama and I caught a freaking largemouth bass this big. Freaking, it was awesome. Yeah, we took him home and ate him too. I never did catch another fish from that pond though, ever. But I kept going back and it was adventure and I loved it. And that was in Alabama. So open your eyes and look around. I mean, hiking, fishing, seeing nature, appreciating nature. There's so much in life. I don't understand how people could ever be bored in life. I need like literally 50 lifetimes to do the things I want to do. I wish you all the best, but that's my answer for you. Thanks for the quality comment, Nicholas. Al Green says, hey, Nutton, I just wanted to drop by and say thank you. I love your videos. I've watched every backpacking video you've made and love them all. I bought a Gunnison 2 tent glacier call. Dude, this guy has been around a while. Kelty Coyote 80L backpack, Falconeven A1, EKV Viking folding saw, and the Katadyne Pro filter. Wow, those are all recommended things. I, I didn't do a folding saw review yet, but all the other ones I love, love, love. My wife and I are really inspired to go out adventuring and camping. I hope that someday you'll be, I'll be as awesome as you are. <laughs> I hope to meet you one day, friend. Much love and well wishes to Allie and the rest of the family, David. And that's uh, Al Green is his screen name. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm not awesome. Uh, I'm just a dude and I'm really honest and straightforward. Uh, you know, I was sitting around last night and I was like, it's almost so funny, I think about it to myself. I don't ever think of myself as nothing fancy. It's almost like a different persona. It's, it's a real trip. I just, I never think about it. I don't know, you can ask my wife, friends who know me. It's like, I just, it's like I park it over here. And I just post and keep doing what I've always done. Brian Mumford says, dude, I think you should make a, the warranty a separate talking point. Spring, li Springfield lifetime, check. S&W lifetime, check. Walther, one year, and they mean it. What the F? That is a great point, dude. Uh, I'm gonna start hammering that home because I forgot Walther's is just one year. That is pretty cheesy. It's not value. And then he has a response from uh, Yugnock. Yup, I had a friend with a Gen 1 P99. Part of it broke. He had 
it ha he had to move heaven and earth to get it fixed. I think Glocks are one year, but who cares? All the parts are a dime a dozen. Vegard Massan writes, hey, nothing fancy. Are you going to test TRC blades? Can't find much on YouTube, but they look nice. Uh, I don't know anything about them. If I get a chance, I'll look into them. Uh, G Gamma writes, hello, nothing fancy. I've been watching your videos for a long time, but I would like to see a Tika T3 tactical setup review one day. Uh, thanks. Uh, I guess I'd go back. I think that's the bolt gun, right? The T3. Uh, yeah, it's all it's all you guys. You know, I've, I've said this before. If there's an interest level there, then I put it on the front burner. But if not, then I, I do the entire mix of the Nut and Fancy project. I'm talking content-wise. And the last ones did not impress. Granted, those the bolt guns I, I reviewed have been out a little bit. Uh, RB Ghost writes, my cousin and I are trying to put some run and gun adventures together and we both realized that we need a good sling for our AR AK. I looked at your videos for sling reviews, but I didn't see much. Maybe a future project. Correction, just found Tactically Squared Away. Kind of covers this. Thanks. Hey, good job for looking at my playlist. You found that video. I do cover it in Tactically Squared Away video. Um, I've never really thought about doing individual sling reviews. I guess I should. Um, I am not one to buy off on these $80 slings. I think they're a freaking ripoff. They, they are shoved down the tactical market's throat with a lot of hype uh, by big names. Like, hey, this person endorses this sling. You can only be a badass and t is a tactical shooter if you have this sling. It's a bunch of crap. A basic sling will work. Uh, the ones that Ares Armors put together are outstanding. Uh, I've used ones from Botac Tactical. They're a uh, Clay Zeon brand. It's their own brand, and they're very cost-effective, and they work. A lot of the running guns you've seen, I'm running uh, Bowtie Tactical slings for 15 bucks. So go on that website, check them out. You want to save money. It's functional good. What you need to decide, like I said, and tactically squared away, all this cottonwood floating around. Do you want a two-point sling or, or a single-point sling? There are advantages and disadvantages to both. So watch the video again, and I hit on that pretty good. Land Shark. My friend, the long time no see, I post this on your page because I know you get views. I'm here to warn fellow veterans that served in, at Fort McClellan. We were exposed to toxic chemicals, radiations, biological. I was there and our government has betrayed us. Okay, if you want to look at that comment, you can. It's on the channel page. I'm going to leave it up there. Scott Hash, I hate to see it. I uh, hate to add another request, but how about the Canic firearms? Hmm, interesting. I would love to see a review on the TriStar C100. I can't afford a CZ, but love the way they feel. Thanks for the consideration. It's really funny the timing on these on these comments and when I do these videos. And just so you know, I never open the page first off and say, hey, let me pre-read these comments. I'm just going cold turkey. And the funny thing is, is I just posted a few days ago the Canic TP9 review. And Great it is gun. a 9.5 or 9 out of 10 likability scale. The only thing that holds it back is trigger. Other than that, you're getting a $320 firearm that is comparable to Glock, Smith & Wesson, Springfield XDM. What's not to like? Cerakoted, your choice of colors, 18 plus 1, comes with a full range of accessories, different sight inserts. Damn, God, that's a good gun. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So, I did one. As far as doing the TriStar C100, uh, not on the list for now. There's some other low, uh, uh, low cost, high value guns that I, I'm trying to get done. Xburn X Forever X says, "Could you put this Ruger 762 on your review list?" Thanks, Xburns. Uh, I don't know. Contact Ruger. Have them contact me. Have them ship me one for loan, and then uh, I'll do it. So you, you put some pressure on Ruger. Say, "Hey, nothing fancy project. Uh, we want him to review the Ruger 762. If they can. I've put so much money in Ruger's pocket. They can contact me and say, "Hey, we give us a review on this." That's where I'm at now. Uh, dude, here's another guy. Where'd the Kershaw Blur reviews go? I already told you about that. Brian Jacob said, thanks for what you do, Nutton. I love the videos. With as busy as you are, I have no delusions that you'll do a review, but what are your thoughts on the new Ruger American Predator? It's a Ruger American with a threaded barrel, a rail, and a colored stock. Seems like something you might, might have thought about. Thanks again, and God bless. Well, a lot of the companies do watch my videos. Ruger's one of them. Uh, I did say in the Ruger American video, I would like to see a tactical version come out. I did say we should have a threaded barrel version of the Ruger American, and there it is. So my thoughts on it, I think it's awesome. I would much prefer that version over a regular Ruger American. Anytime I can run a can on a on the end of my barrel or have that option, or if you live in a non-suppressor state, a muzzle brake, just screw it on, flash suppressor, whatever, 
down, I'm down. So I think it's a great idea. It's good to see. Uh, I'm not surprised that they called it the Predator and not something tactical. That's very rugerish. Sometimes they shy away with the tactical stuff and they always concentrate on the hunting market. As an aside, David Lerner writes, nothing fancy, I'm interested in the FMP 45 tactical. I currently own a ported officer's 1911, a SIG 238, and so the 1911 battery of arms, I'm sorry, manual of arms is what I would like to stay with. I've been some time looking for a dedicated uh, shit hits a fan weapon. I believe the FMP would fill my needs with only one concern, the safety, da, 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 da. Thank you for your input. Keep up great work. Uh, I have shot the FMP 45 tactical quite a bit. Uh, well, actually, not quite a bit, but some. So all these guns blur after a while. Uh, it's a good gun. If, if it's a WRL we weapon, I'd really think uh, very carefully about your caliber selection. You're mentioning a 45 ACP. You're going to be able to carry a lot fewer rounds with that. It's going to be a less common round if you need to barter with that am ammunition. I would go with the 9mm. Just me. As far as the capabilities of a 45, I think they're great. I've talked about it at length in many of the reviews I've done. Uh, will I do a review on it? If I see someone else commenting and asking for it, maybe I will. Falcon Gaming writes, I'm on a budget and need a defensive carbine rifle. I was looking at the SKS. I would get it now, and as I get more money, maybe add a Tapco stock and make it 922R compliant. Any thoughts? Better, cheaper ideas. And then someone else answers them. Uh, says, for the price, you could do that. Get an M&P 15 Sport for around 700 just a thought. That's a good answer. The M&P 15 Sport, which I reviewed, is highly recommended. Extremely cost-effective. You get all the AR-15 ergos with it. It's very... Uh, high quality for the money you're paying. The latest ones don't have the 5R rifling in them and they don't have the melanite finish on the barrel, I, I think. I think Smith & Wesson had problems sourcing those barrels. So the latest M&P 15s that came out uh, lack those features, but for the amount of rounds that you will shoot it, realistically, it'll be great. SKSs are excellent. Uh, I finally got around to my SKS video a few months back. That's out there. Uh, it is the Yugo. At SK that I reviewed and I did kind of bounce a, a Chinese SK and SKS in there as well. They're excellent. Uh, I don't really like charging it compared to an AK style rifle. I'm talking about top charging with stripper clips. You can do a magazine conversion on them but you might want to look at your value equation very carefully. If I want to spend, I don't know, 450, 500 on an SKS then I got to get a magazine conversion and do some work and you know, and is it as elegant of a design as a dedicated AK series rifle? No. Just go with an AK. You know, just go get, you know, a, a Romanian AK and they shoot. You know, you need to decide which platform you want to run, AR or AK. I prefer the AR for its ergonomics. As far as its reliability, AK is superb. My AK versus AR-15 video series still out there, posted I think 2008 or something. How far am I into this? We're good. George Clark, he writes, M1A, I've been around the block with some combat know-alls and they're, they only want the M1. Why? Because they never served in combat, only want the rifle used in World War II. Well, the M14 or the M1A shoots better, flatter, further with a better kill record per round fired than the M1. I used that rifle, only that rifle, and all three tours in Vietnam would not use the M16, 30 cal, more. Uh, oh, this is a long comment. 30 cal is just better than 22 in combat. Not political, just reality. That's basically what I say in my 308 battle rifle review. So, I mean, I, I've told you that. I think the 223 is a freaking pea shooter. It doesn't hit that hard. I think within 200 meters or so, I say 300 in the reviews, you can stretch it. I'd use it. I, it's just because what I've seen do on, in my tactical shooting, how hard, how lightly it hits the steel. Beyond that, we can't even hear it. It's just not good. Can you defeat automotive glass? Go through car doors and stuff like that? Mm, no. It's easily deflected. It's all SAWC, and I, I, I'm very clear about that in the reviews. And so you need to decide where you are at with SAWC. His his comment continues. I still own an M1A and shoot it weekly along with a a variety of quality 357 revolvers every now and then a semi-auto pistol of course i limit them to sig 1911 springfield xd ruger sr45 sorry only quality and all the others i have tried i either gave away or threw in the trash so it's controversial dude there's gonna be guys that will like that i had a colt 1911 wore it out 
since his sick quality is equal to top line Colts David Sick, uh, he's given a big rundown. Now, the threads 200 yards plus. Uh, Try and do it. Okay, you can go read his comment on the channel page. So that's actually a good comment just for time. I want to like abbreviate it there. Uh, there's a lot of great guns. I will say that I have had jams with SIG 1911s. That jams a lot of things. Granted, I was using a Kimber 10 round magazine in it, but I'd use that same magazine and all kinds of other 1911s in it were in fine. So are SIG 1911s better than others? No. No, not in my opinion. There's so many great 1911s. But it's really not a GTW gun for me. I mean, you have a 40 ounce pistol, eight plus one, maybe 10 plus one if you're running extended, not GTW. Not enough rounds, dude. Too damn heavy. I got other stuff I'm carrying and I'm not in shape. Grant Lone says, still interested in the SCAR 17S review, thanks. Message received, stay tuned. Wesley Payne, love your vids and all your work in the community. Yes, my wife knows your voice and wonders what I'm going to buy next when she hears it. Would love to hear your POU on a Glock 19. Uh, you've got stellar reviews on a Glock 17 and 26. I hate to waste your time on more of the same. You referenced the 19 in your Galco shoulder holster reviews and EDC vids. Would love to hear your take on why 19 is a good choice. Huh, I thought I did a review on the Glock 19. Maybe I didn't. Uh, yeah, it's going to be, it'd be an identical video to the Glock 17. I mean, it's basically the same gun, so the POU discussion would be identical. The Glock 19 is superb. I mean, all three of them are great. And if you want to go 40, go 40, 357 SIG, doesn't matter. Nine is my choice in the Glock format. Usually I have some Glock 22s as well. Just such good guns. They're so, I could go on and on about Glocks. And it's funny, I labeled that one video, uh, the Canic TP9, you know, making Glock scared for $319. Um, I like that Glock gets competition because Glock is very arrogant sometimes in their approach and a lot of, it's not just Glock it's all the companies they get a bigger market share and their whole perception towards their customers changes and they think they have the world by the tail and I don't like that I think a company should always be hungry they should always be lean they should always take uh, never take their customers for granted and I've seen from my reviews and having brought business to a lot of these companies, they've developed those attitudes. And uh, I don't like it. It pisses me off. That's one reason I don't like going to trade shows anymore. Um, I just don't like it. So when a gun comes out for 319 bucks, it's as good as their Glocks, I laugh. I think it's funny. And I also think it's funny. Guys think I, I'm all about Glocks, but because that was the first gun I reviewed. Um, I love Glocks. I carry them daily. But I acknowledge design greatness in all the manufacturers and I have always in the Nut Fancy project. I am not brand or type myopic. As far as a dedicated video on the Glock 19, maybe, maybe I will. I know you guys watch it. I just don't want it to be like a replay of everything I've done. Uh, Hel Helgen FTU says, hey Nutton, looking for your opinion on the R700 target tactical and of the action, do you prefer long or short? Uh, the Remington 700 series is excellent. The target tactical, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I would imagine would be about the same. I don't like the ejection on Remington 700s. It's very bad. The spring steel ejector sucks. It, uh, and I've replaced it. I've talked about it in my videos. It's really hard to get it working. Does it function? Yes. Has it served the military, that action? Yes. I like CRF more. I would look very closely in CRF designs, kind of like the FNTSR. Yeah. Do I prefer long or short action? Uh, I prefer hitting power. So whatever does that, I'm for. Because if I'm doing a long range bolt gun, I want to shoot the biggest, meanest, baddest cartridge I can actually chamber. Because I want to range out to a thousand yards if and when that POU is ever necessary. Cost effectively, that's going to usually mean a long action 300 Winchester Magnum. If you're willing to reload and make it part of your life, and I mean as in life, you're reloading, testing, than a 338 Lapeur or 50 BMG. Yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, let's see, hey James uh, Lou writes, hey there Nut and Fancy, I mostly watch your hiking videos. I've been thinking, moon, stars, and mountains are your favorite. <laughs> so not, why not visit the outback of Australia? The best place is scientif scientifically proven to stargaze. I don't doubt that at all. New Zealand, there's nothing more beyond, there are, there are nothing more beyond New Zealand mountains. Nothing but constant green, pure layers of hills. Just you 
a long nut and fancy it almost made me want to move to America. <laughs> Guns, a shit ton of it, he writes. Nature and people. I thought you don't need a AR-15s or AKs, AK-47s to be happy. Knowing how lucky I am to enjoy New, New Zealand's natural view is enough and people here are oh so caring. I want you to come and enjoy it because you deserved it. Please pack your things and go. That's James Liu writing from New Zealand. Thank you very much. Uh, New Zealand is such a cool country. And I read, I wouldn't say a lot, but I try to jam in reading as much as I can. And one of the books I read was the bad, one of the Pacific Island battles. I'll try to think of the name of it. One Square Mile of Hell, I think it was called. Uh, the Battle for Tarawa, one of those two. And the troops uh, in their off times would actually uh, go to New Zealand. And actually that's represented in the Pacific the HBO miniseries about the Pacific War that Tom Hanks did with, I think, Steven Spielberg. And the American soldiers became very close and often married off with New Zealanders. And even to this day, my understanding is there is a camaraderie there and a feeling that the United States protected New Zealand from the Japanese aggression at the time. And they are very kind and open-hearted people. I would love to go to New Zealand. It's great. Would I want to live there? No, I have too many guns. Americans, it's not that we love guns, we just love freedom. And we don't trust, ultimately, um, the higher government authorities. If it comes down to brass tacks, that's what we're talking about. And that's the way this country was founded. The whole reason we left England was to create a country where we're free to do whatever the hell we want. And we're able to acknowledge the natural rights that we've been given by God. You know? So the gun is recreation but it's also an insurance policy that you remain free. And any country that curtails that ability to have, own, use guns freely is setting you up for subjugation. End of rant. Matt Smith says, hey nothing, just done watching Mac talk about a new POF MP5 pistol clone with a groovy arm brace and it looks sweet. Uh, you should check into some nice short carvings using a SIG brace. Love to, uh, love to see what you thought of the usefulness. Okay, noted. Maybe I might go look at that. Um, I like barrel length. I like velocity. I like hitting hard with the cartridges I'm shooting. Uh, you know, chopping the barrel off seven inches, it's got to be a really good reason for doing that. And the only good reason I can think is you need a high firepower weapon, concealed carry, kind of like Secret Service or something. <laughs> this screen name is He's So Shifty. Hey, nothing. Hate to throw in a request for firearms review. You get so many, but any chance for a foul review? There doesn't seem much reliable info on YouTube about them. Quite frankly, I trust your word on the subject more than the vast majority of gun reviewers. Thanks, Shifty. Uh, thank you for the request. I think I did a viewer's comments video before where guys are asking for the foul. Uh, it's a very heavy 1970s era 7.62-51 battle rifle that can't take optics. It doesn't excite me. I mean, when the rifle a naked weighs like 10 and a half pounds, why? Why would you not go with an M1A? You know, like that guy's, the M1A is just outstanding. You can't, there's optics mounts out there, like the Cava mount is outstanding for the M1A. If you have one, you should look into it. It's reliable. It comes in all types of different configurations, barrel sizes. Um, but you're like the umpteenth viewer that's asked me for a foul review. If I do one, don't get pissed at me if I'm not excited about it, you know? Because I'll do a foul review, maybe get a, give it a likability scale of five out of 10. I'm not going to lie about it, you know, if it's awesome, I'll tell you. But that's my that's my approach to systems, you know. You may feel differently, but having a main battle, uh, you know, main battle rifle that I can't put optics on and range out to 600 yards, I have a hard time. But you can do that with iron sights. Uh, I'm going to say you can't from the people that shoot with me in the Nut Fancy Project. They can't hit shit past 300 yards, iron sights. Heck, they can't hit shit freaking 200 yards with iron sights. No, I'm not making it up. It's just what I've seen for six years now. Uh, Amaro R4Y writes, Mr. Nut Fancy, I need your help in fighting the ATF's decision banning new imports seven and six. I received a letter from Warren Hatch. He does not get it. Please help us fight to overturn this arbitrary ruling. Thank you. You're absolutely right. What he's talking about is 545 by 39 ammunitions, commonly known as seven and six, has been banned by you know who. Why? Arbitrary. Just like she says or he says. There's no reason for it. Anything that's imported can be shut off by executive order. The Republicans have been guilty of this and the Democrats have been guilty of it, big time. 
Um, do I have any leverage to overturn this? Uh, I could do a call to action video. We could do gen up 10,000 letters. Uh, check that. Let's do a thousand letters because people say they're going to write and they don't write. Uh, I'll think about it. I just don't know if I, could, I have the viewer participation. And last call to actions that I did had really anemic response. That's why I haven't seen any lately. It's all you guys. I mean, if you guys participate, I do more. MixU37 says, great video. Thanks from Finland. You're welcome, dude. Odinger Krote says, nothing fancy. I bought my first gun today. Oops. I pushed the wrong button. A new Springfield Arms XD chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson, 4-inch barrel, 2-tone. Unfortunately, I live in California, so I'm stuck with 10-round magazines, and the XDM is banned. I have, however, put probably 1,000 rounds through the XD, though, and I like what I'm getting. Now the genius 10-day cool-off period. I just wanted to thank you again for doing what you do to promote Second Amendment rights. My state has already gone full moron, you got that right, bro, and it's lost. However, the other states can still be saved, and armed populace is a free populace, and this is something I've always believed in. When I get the funds, I will immediately sign up for a lifetime membership as well. Peace, nothing fancy. That is Odinger Krote two weeks ago. Uh, wow, what a great comment. I thank you for that, and I couldn't agree more. The XD, XDM series are outstanding. You're not really that uh, handicapped by 10-round magazines. You can change them quick. And uh, honestly, there's a lot of dudes I know in California. They have full-capacity magazines. By the way, that's what they're called. They're not called high-capacity. They're called full or normal, that's even better, normal capacity magazines, they just, just do it. You can out, you could, in the in a pin stroke, you could say, hey, tomorrow, all guns, all magazine, magazines, feeding devices are gonna be illegal, and it, it would never change violent crime, it wouldn't change anything, it would put a lot of good people in jail, it would turn into felons, a lot of good citizens, but it would never ever solve, solve what is so-called the gun problem, won't do it. It's all kinds of dangerous devices evil people can use to kill other people. That dude in Santa Barbara. I mean, what he, I haven't really watched that that carefully, but I know he stabbed like three people, right? Okay, and then he shot like, what, three people or something like that? Car can be a weapon. Knife can be a weapon. An iron firing, frying pan upside the head can be a weapon. Baseball bat can bash people's brains out. I like how you said you're going to join the NRA and keep a, a lifetime membership going, or buy a lifetime membership. Well done. We all need to be political activists. If you own a gun, you are a political activist. That's for sure. Let me do a time check here. Eric Shump, can you please tell me where you got your lanyard for the Spyderco Paramilitary 2? Uh, good question. And yeah, I got that at firearmsprostore.com. Tell them you want the nothing fancy knife lanyard. It is tied specifically to my length requirements. I don't like long lanyards dangling off my tactical blades. I just need it long enough so I can grab it and yank it out of the pocket. So there you go. Jeffrey Lucas says, nothing at all. I need to take on CCW, I need to take on CCW options in shorts without belt loops. I've pretty much altered my wardrobe support system so I've always got a suitable belt. That's a pain sometimes. What do you guys in swim trunks, board shorts and the, and the like like? So I, I think he's saying he's wearing shorts. What, what should I wear? Uh, this guy says carry a Ruger LCP. Thanks for the input. My daily carry is a 4.25 4 inch 1911. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'll need to alter my system to accommodate my lighter wardrobe. After the winter months of research, I'm thinking XDS, maybe Glock 36. Uh, Jeffrey Lucas, I would say 1911 uh, is probably not your best carry choice ever. What? Uh, yeah, don't get pissed, but it really isn't just because I see so few people committing to carry a 48 ounce carry gun consistently. I'm a broken record, dude. I've said this so many times. If you want to, go ahead, but I think you're much better off to go into my best concealed carry playlist and get one of those. XDS, awesome. You know, Walther PPS, awesome. Smith & Wesson Shield, awesome. Keltec PF9, awesome. Car PM9, awesome. Ruger LC9. I'm not excited about it. It's very hard to shoot, but it is reliable. Take your pick. Uh, why not shoulder holster? Or better yet, belly band. If you want maximum concealability, you know, belly band. Like right now, Glock 26. Could you tell? I didn't think so. Belly bands are awesome. I have a review on those, by the way. Vegas. Well, I can't even, He's got so many characters after that, I don't even know what it is. He says, I know you probably don't like the 8.6 pound weight of the Vepr 12 shotguns, but from all research I've done, they far outperform the Sega for the money, especially when it comes to reliability of any type of shell load right out of the box. On top of that, they get the performance parts you need to get it running flawlessly and get a nice trigger. 
Uh, 8.6 pounds for a shotgun, auto shotgun is about on par. That's usually what they uh, run. I didn't really look into the Vepper 12s. The Segas are finicky. I mean, to make them run, you gotta tune them for the load you're gonna shoot. And even then, they can still choke on you. Uh, loading these magazines and keeping them loaded with the soft shells, uh, can, they can crunch, and then you bring up a loaded magazine, it's gonna induce jams. Uh, point being is I'm not super sure that a clip-fed shotgun is your best high firepower, I shouldn't say high firepower, but combat shotgun option just because of feeding devices and the nature of the ammunition being fed. I don't have any doubts from what I know now, the Vepper 12s aren't awesome. But, you know, look at your philosophy of use, which you'd use action, literally for a shotgun. And I'll go back to what I said in a review years ago. To me, it's kind of like the Rodney King riots in the early 90s, that I would have a dude with a combat shotgun on the roof of an establishment that needed protecting. Maybe it's a house, maybe it's a place of business. And then I'd be have paired paired up with either 308 battle rifles or tactical carbines in the mix of my fellow defenders. The shotgun being able to do some very close in, high firepower uh, leveling out of the playing field, so to speak. But it's slow to reload and has limited range. Uh, I think guys say, well, I can cycle back and forth between uh, you know, slugs, Brennicky slugs and buckshot. I think that's more fantasy than reality from the tactical shooting I've done because you're going to be so stressed, not really keeping track of what's going on. And that's without even getting shot at. You start getting rounds coming into you. I don't know. Instead, I'd have my teammates have AR-15, AR-15, 308 battle rifle, 308 battle rifle. You know, good mix. So you just got all types of lead coming down range from different platforms. Mr. Fatspeed says, hello, nothing fancy. Recently, I saw your great uh, video review on the Glock 2021. I was so impressed with the data and the amount of information you gave. I went out and put a Glock 20C on layaway at my local dealer. There I am giving Glock more money. And just today I hooked into a very lightly used Glock 21 SF from a local pawn shop. Can't wait to take it out shooting. I'm going to have to work hard to get that Glock 20 out of layaway. That's Mr. Fat Speed PH. Uh, Fat Speed. Great comment. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad that video helped you. Uh, the Glock 20 is probably my overall favorite um, go-to-war pistol right now. That may surprise you. Uh, let me caveat that. If, if I know that my support system doesn't, isn't gone too far and I can take the 10 millimeter ammo, which like I said earlier, is heavier than other calibers, 10 mm, 45 ACB, all being the same. But the way that thing hits, how soft it shoots, its penetration capabilities when stoked with full so loads. So we'll do a little more reliability you know, like Buffalo test, you know, or uh, Underwood ammo. That Underwood ammo that's full power. Glock 20 on some Damn, steel. Damn, it's hard. Yeah, it and then Glock 21, she plus P's in that thing. Practice with though, because there's a lot of blast coming out. Congratulations on a great gun. I absolutely love it. Whenever I can, I'll click carry a Glock 20. Ken Warshall says, hey, nothing fancy. I haven't seen your review on the FN, FNX40. How about it? I think that someone else in a viewer's comment video said this, and I'm trying to remember. The thing, I don't like the magazine system in the FNX where it has just a single bump on the front of the magazine to retain it. And so I've been dragging my feet on it. That's why though. Uh, I have a good relationship with FN. They've been very good. Uh, so we'll see. I might get one along, knock it out. Defender of the second 1979 says, any chance of a 300 blackout re review? Cool home dog answers no, and he's correct. I'm not doing that. Cronin 1041 says, have not seen Allie the Mountain Dog in a while. Hope she's doing okay. I think I'm gonna give you an update video on Allie. She is doing well. Uh, she is 10 and a half years old. She runs about four times a week, slowly now. Um, she has arthritis, she has uh, cloudy eyes, but she can still see here well. She's very alert and we are blessed and we love you guys for all your love and support for Allie the Mountain Dog. A very important part of the project. Let's see where I'm at time-wise. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon. I'll uh, skip that one. Let's see. Hey, Night Fancy, I love all your videos and everything TMP is about. Keep on keeping on, brother. I know how much you love about the challenge and I have one for you. Do you remember the multi-tool continuum? Yes, I do. This was the best series for helping peop people pick the right tool for them without wasting a lot of time and money. We need a shot timer continuum. Shot timers are great training tools that never get reviewed, probably because they are tactical. One of your niches seems to be doing things mainstream misses much of the time. I really hope you accept this challenge. Thanks for keeping up the good work. <coughs> Thanks and keep up. Good luck, I think he says. Uh, so shot timers, reviewing them, is that what the question is? Uh, 
I use one. It's I think that I forget what the brand it is, and it's cool. I don't know, man. I use timers to put stress on the shooters. I'm not that good of a shooter. I'm medium, medium high, medium, and a little stress is good. I might do that. Dana Johnson says it has become difficult to contact you directly. Hey, you're contacting me directly now. It is uh, because you hide behind gun and knife reviews and the TMP project and whatever that ad has become. I suspect many of your followers have called you out on your political videos. Hmm. You are at you asked them to step up while you while you well. I'm too outspoken. I'm a Democrat. What's a Democrat? And I just trust your judgment. Get in the game, son. Trust in honesty. I don't really know what your point is, dude. I'll tell you this: no one's put it out there more politically than me. No one. I mean, here I have a large viewer base, and I have all that to lose with every political video I do, with every life philosophy video I do, and I've lost subs. They disagree with what I say politically. There's Democrats that are very pro Obama, and for whatever reason, they're pro gun. But then when they see me come out and blast Obama, hey, I'm unsubbing. You're a bastard. So, see ya. Unsub. No one's put it out online. I called out all the other gun channels back in uh, 2012, December 12. I said, hey, where the hell are you guys? I'm the only one out here responding to the Sandy Hook, you know, gun charges. And then little by little, everyone else started trickling in after I called them out. So, yeah, I'm on the point on political stuff. Always have been. It's part of my, my charter here in the Net and Fancy Project. You know, if I lose subs, I lose subs. I don't care. This whole damn thing shuts down. I don't care. What I care about is when I die, I look back and go, yeah, I lived with integrity. You know, I lived to defend freedom. I did the right thing when it counted. I inspired good. You know, I, I, I supported good. Reasonable measures to support freedom. So, yeah. Don't know what your point is, but I don't think you got one. Brian Mumford says, what, are video, what videos are in the pipeline? Uh, well, that was two weeks ago he wrote that. What can I tell you that's in the pipeline? I can't because all the clone channels come out with it too. If I breathe, I've learned that years ago that if I come out and I say I'm going to do this gun review, that review, then what you see is all the other clone channels jump and they do it too. And then it, why is that a big deal? Well, it, to me, just creatively, it makes it less special. It, the message becomes diluted. You know why? So I've learned to keep my mouth shut until it posts. You'll see some different content coming out that you'll like. I'm going to do some motorcycle videos. It's part of the mix. If you haven't already subbed to the Nut and Fancy project, I'm gonna post some on there, and then this channel, Nut and uh, Fancy, and you'll see those videos post on both. It's part of the adventure, deal with it. Pavold says, hey, will there be videos of the 2,000 mile trip you took with Suzuki's on the V-Stroms? No, I did not plan this. I would really be interested, and also the second part of the safety motorcycle safety video, I love all the stuff you put up there, keep it up. Thank you. There's a motorcycle fan right there, dude. Yeah, I'm actually going to do part uh, two uh, and part three of the video of the V-Strom ride we did in May 2013, and I'm probably going to post uh, on each channel. So you'll see that come out, and I'm really glad to see that comment because it gets me going on it. Uh-oh, you are now running on reserve battery power. I better wrap it up. Is it me, or does a Cabela Savage 10T tactical bolt-action rifle for $5.99 seem like a sweet deal? That's from Brian Mumford also. Uh, I would say all those Savage rifles are awesome. I hope they improve that side lockout thing on the access trigger on a tactical rifle. That is not a very good thing to have. Go watch the video if you don't know what I'm talking about. Ned Fancy, I enjoy all your firearms reviews. Do you have an opinion on the Seiko Tika line of rifles? David Grobe. Yeah, they're excellent. Excellent. The Seiko stuff is just insane, man. Uh, let's see, one vid every week or so is killing me, nothing, just saying. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to work hard for you. Right on the channel right now is uh, Last Suspect's Wreck video. I've done a really good job, though, for you guys putting out some pistol reviews. I've worked my butt off doing it within the last probably, probably three weeks or so three weeks or so you've had four or five videos of gun reviews so I've, I've worked hard for you guys I've been true to my charter and that if you guys watch them I make them um, and now I'm just gonna wrap it up with that I'm at 5% battery power right now that's viewers comments uh, this has actually been a pretty good place
to make the video. I'm very surprised. People walking by, but they're all totally chilled out and cool and respectful of the filming process. Thank you for watching. Uh, the venture continues. Uh, your support is so important. Your views to the videos are so important because it keeps me motivated. Uh, I only do it because I enjoy it. I love being really busy. I like working hard for good purposes, for freedom purposes, for helping you guys out in your gear purchases. Uh, you'll see more pistol reviews, more flashlight reviews, more multi-tool reviews, more tactical rifle reviews, uh, more interviews, and more adventures. Maybe even backpacking adventures. TMP, thanks guys, we'll see you.